Much of the medication we take ends up in our water. Our bodies don't absorb everything, and so the rest gets flushed down the toilet. Some of it ends up in our lakes and rivers, and can cycle back to our faucets. What do we know about drugs in the water, and what are we doing about it? Certainly, uh, it's an area of concern. We take drugs as pills, and uh, the way that they're designed is that you take a much higher mass of concentration than your body needs. The vast majority of it is emitted as waste, and so we uh, basically pee out the vast majority of what we're taking. But when it comes to pharmaceuticals, they are designed to be biologically active in your body at low levels. And so a low concentration of a pharmaceutical is of, of greater concern from a e ecotoxicological or for aquatic species or for human health than would uh, maybe some industrial chemical at the same level. You're saying that we, we, we believe they're in the water, but we're not sure if they're there at a level that would pose a risk to hum, human health. Is we that know they're in the water because we can detect them. Um, but yes, the risk analysis associated with that, I think, is certainly still being evaluated. So how do we know there are pharmaceutical drugs in the water? We use um, analytical chemistry instruments. We use chromatography and mass spectrometry significantly to a degree where we can detect them very clearly and confidently uh, what is there and, and what levels that they're there. Is there anything right now that a consumer can do to remove these things? Uh, I, I drink tap water. I think you can use a, a local filter if you want the activated carbon type filter at the use. But there are other risks associated with those because you have to maintain your filters. You can't be recommending that bottled water is the solution. No, no, I'm not. Uh, if I find myself in a situation where I have to use bottled water, I look for a bottled water that um, has either come from a tap source, so that's EPA regulated, and then it has FDA regulations on top of it. <laughs> I think the solution is upstream. I think changing drug delivery could be a huge help to reducing loads into the environment. They have technologies, patches, et cetera, that bring drugs into our body at much lower doses than a pill. What are you doing in your lab to address this issue? I study the pharmaceuticals on the wastewater side, which um, we view as the first step in drinking water treatment. Environments that have oxygen present but at very low levels, um, they uh, perform comparably in terms of pharmaceutical removal to environments where we provide a lot of oxygen. Putting oxygen into the wastewater treatment plant to enable treatment is half the cost of the treatment plant and it's the vast majority of the carbon footprint. So if we can reduce the energy input and the carbon footprint at a treatment plant and at the same time get the same level of pharmaceutical removal that's better than a treatment plant that just puts all that oxygen in, Let's go for it. So that's what we're looking at. I want to do what I can to get it out before it enters into the environment so that it doesn't end up at the drinking water plant. We're beginning to understand the full course of our medications. Today the technologies to take them out of the water are very expensive, but researchers are looking for solutions. Right now we're in a period where even if we have above average precipitation and snow melt this spring, which we're very likely to have, we might only then begin to start creeping back towards that.